Yeah. They took they took C and B. I'm gonna go for C. Okay. You have to capture the objective. Hi guys, this is Matt Diaz, and what you see here is some of the gameplay from the first day of me trying out the new beta map for Battlefield 5, Rotterdam. And the thing that I would like to bring up in this video is, will Rotterdam be the savior that DICE, EA and Battlefield 5 needs? Now I think that most of you guys know that Battlefield 5 has been received quite poorly. I wouldn't say it's a disaster or a crisis, but it is definitely bad. Now what we've it's seen like is a lot good. lower numbers in the pre-orders of Battlefield yeah, 5 compared to what was expected and especially compared to Battlefield 1. We also yeah, noticed that during like that the too. alpha trial where we played Narvik, there was an unexpected amount of people that were really unhappy about the game. Aside from that, we've also seen something very very unusual when it comes to a Battlefield game that its trailer received a lot of negativity. Now, personally, I believe that DICE and EA made a massive mistake adding that uh, social justice warrior type agenda into the game. Both Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 2 have elements and big portions of the game that are very, very realistic and very believable, but when they, in several aspects of the game, prioritize political correctness over facts, that's actually quite risky, and whether or not that plays a big role or not to why uh, this game isn't all that popular or hasn't been so far, I guess we can only speculate. Me, personally, I actually believe it does play a part but then again, I'm a bit biased in this situation, so part of why I believe so is observation. Part of it is a little bit of my bias. And what I mean by my bias is that I think that political correctness is basically a disease that needs a cure. However, Battlefield 5 is a game, and hopefully, in the end, I hope that is all that matters. Now, before I played this game, I watched a few videos from other YouTubers, and for the most part, what I saw was positive reviews and positive experiences. Personally, I did not share the same positivity when I played, and unfortunately for me, the reasons why I didn't particularly like Norvik that much or the Alpha was basically the same reasons to why I didn't like the first day of Beta, and that is that basically all the new features in the game are things that I believe doesn't really belong in a Battlefield game. Again, with the new animations and the system, it was improved, in my opinion, in the beta from the alpha, so it's better, but in my opinion, again, it's not good. The reason why they added the building system, uh, there has been a lot of speculations about that, uh, a lot of people point towards Fortnite, whether or not that is true, I don't know, but again, I really don't see how that improves a game such as Battlefield 5. Yes, I've built fortifications, I see people building them all the time, I see people using the fortifications in order to secure a flag, for example, while they're capping it. I am fully aware of the fact that once I know the yeah, game better, I, I could probably benefit from the fortification system better than I can now. But again, for now, I will stick to my opinion when I say that fortifications was more or less a mistake. Now, I want to point out that this is my opinions based on my experiences, and I do not mean that in any way to be disrespectful towards you if you have a different opinion about fortifications or the other things about the game. So now another thing that is quite important to bring up here is uh, performance, and especially for me since I have a relatively old graphics card, a 970, and uh, the way I see it, that graphics card isn't really enough for the beta build of Battlefield 5. So for the ones of you that feel like you don't really agree with what I'm saying, keep that in mind that oh, the there. negativity that I say is also partly based on the fact that I have uh, frame rate drops that affect especially how well I do in close quarter combat situations. Now if you have a better system than me, then you probably don't have to worry too much about that part. But if oh, you right. have a similar or even an older build than I have, and you want to play this game, then you somewhere. might have to consider what it costs to upgrade. Oh, there's another one coming. My nade hit, hit something from a a a direction. Okay. Throwing a bomb. Soldiers, we have taken objective able. I hit him again in there. My 
spawning on you. The guy kill, killed me from Alpha to travel. Yeah. Got one. There's a lot of them here now. There's a guy camping somewhere in one passage on my body. Two of them now. So now, aside from the negative things that I brought up so far in the video, I also want to bring up some of the positive experiences that I've had in this game. One of them is that I think the gunplay in general is better in Battlefield 5 than it is in Battlefield 1. The way I see it, you benefit more from a little bit knowledge about the recoil control and tap firing. Now the recoil control, let's be honest, it's not all that advanced, it's actually a little bit silly to bring it up even. But tap firing, it's quite essential the moment you start shooting past 40, maybe 50 meters. And I experienced this especially with this one, the default weapon of the assault, the STG. Ah! Now, aside from the weapon control in general, there are other aspects of the game that really is better than Battlefield 1, at least in my opinion. For example, I think that fires in Battlefield 1 can be really, really annoying. The fact that you constantly take damage when there are tiny little fires on the ground beneath you, it, it, it just, it's just this irritation that uh, drags down your gaming experience. And in Battlefield 5, they have fixed that so that as long as you're standing up, you're not taking damage from tiny little fires. You only take damage from them if you're crouching or proning. Now, there was a lot of balance changes from uh, the alpha build to the beta build. Uh, you notice that the weapon I'm using here, the STG-44, was not as effective. And I also noticed that uh, the SMG I tested for the medic class was no way near as good as my favorite SMG from the alpha. Now, so far, I think there's no point trying to analyze certain weapons or discussing a uh, balance between certain weapons. There's going to be so many changes anyway, based on the feedback and the statistics that uh, DICE are working with. But the fact that some of the weapons have more versatility and the fact that the very, very annoying sweet spot of the sniper rifles oh, are range. gone, that is very good news, at least in my opinion. Grenade rifle kill! So yeah, whether or not you share my concerns or my opinions about Battlefield 5, whether you have played it or not, I hope you will enjoy the rest of the video. My name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching. Two enemies in front of me and I didn't see them. Oh yeah, that's so irritating. Happens to me all the time. Go for E or Charlie. Yeah. Attention, we have lost objective dog. Let's run more there. Yes, I dealt ninety damage. Oh shit. Oh fuck, there's somebody sniping him. I got him. Am I gonna get killed? Oh yeah.
have lost objective Dora. Huh, long shots. I need to heal up. Ooh.